Hey there, welcome back. So let's continue with the flat play, the transition of flat play case. So I will launch Fluent. Remember now we're working outside the bubble of ANSYS Workbench. So we want to, I, I will run in, in ANSYS Fluent stand alone. So this is a 2D case. Okay, I put here my directory where I have everything. Choose the number of processors here. I will put four. Okay, I have four, so I will put that one. So let's launch. So just a reminder that if you download the cases, you're going to find here the Fluent case ready to go. So this is what we are going to to use plus we have there the additional validation data and some some outputs I put there to compare compare now so we have different solutions different models there that later we're, we're going to see okay so in my case fluent is ready okay so I will open the case okay and the case and data for only yes so why not so when you see the data there usually means that you have the the, the solution Okay, so now I load the case and first let's take a look at the mesh. Okay, so put there and uh, so everything. And this is the mesh and look at that. It's a very, very fine mesh now in the direction normal to the wall. Not so fine in this stream wise. Okay, but uh, let's say that, that that is fine enough. You can do something finer for this. Well, for this case, it is okay. But remember that in transition, it's also important that direction and this you have also the third dimension is also important to resolve there. These white lines represents now the sampling points. So I already created those lines there. So at this point, let's take a look at the case at top. Okay, so we have our traditional. I like to work in this vertical workflow here so here nothing changed okay so i'm not going into detail so then you can check the material is air if i would recall but the important here is that check the turbulence model so we're going to work in transition models and see here that you have different options okay so you have the transition kk L omega is a three equation models. We're going to run with this one, the transition SST, which is a very good one. Okay, but it's up to you now to judge which one is the best one. And here we have also a few corrections that later we're going to talk about in more details about those corrections. And just to mention that you have a source model here, so you go here, K omega SST see that you have the option to enable and you have the gamma transport equation something that as well we, we address a little bit in, in in the theory okay so this model is lighter than the transition sst but all uh, but also you have a few advantages because they include here you no know, this cross flow transition okay so you have cross flow okay so it's up to you to play with this tree i will set up this one this is the one we, we are going to use and at this point, that is the only thing that I wanted to show you. Now we go. The other thing that I need to mention is here you got boundary conditions. Again, remember that you have a turbulence model, you need to give boundary initial conditions. So here there is a new initial condition and boundary condition, which is for the intermittency. Okay. So it's that variable that is going to define where do you have a uh, laminar flow or turbulent flow. Okay. So here you have it. It is bounded between zero and one and it is recommended that to initialize and at the end let's to put it one. Okay. It's, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but this is a standard practice. Okay. So put it to one. Then also just to mention that transition to turbulence is very sensitive to, to the turbulence intensity level and this quantity. So you, you also advise you to play with the values and you will see the influence. But here we're using the values from the experiment. Okay. From the experimental data. Okay. So that's all. Then standard numerics. Here we're setting everything second order. As we are solving this new model, we're introducing two additional equations, one from the intermittency and the momentum sickness. So here we set up how to solve those. Nothing to do here as well. We should pick up the default values. And as user, remember to set up your monitor. So here we're setting a few monitors. Okay, so here we're sampling in a line. Watch your stress, density, mu. Okay, so that is just a standard sampling. So at this point, we can initialize. We can take the default value. So remember that we initialize everything with one in intermittency. And that's all, okay? So at this point, it will give you a, a warning. There is one you can just try to, to set up that one. But for this case, it does not matter. So let's run, okay? So at this point, 
we're using the default. Again, also, uh, you can try different numerics. Okay, my goal is not to show you a numeric, but different methods that will give you different convergence rates. You should arrive to the same solution or similar solution. So at this point, let me press calculate and off we go. So see that we have all the monitors. Okay, so see that as I mentioned that you have new equations. Okay, the red theta intermittency. I'm not going into details. We address that in the theory. Uh, something a small warning here that inter intermittency is difficult to make converge. Okay, so don't be uh, afraid that <clears throat> that is not the residuals are not going down as the other quantities. This is difficult to to converge, and usually you will get these behaviors. Okay, so it's not. A big problem, but remember always, but look at that, all the other quantities are converging very well. But it's always what you need to check is just integral quantities, okay? So see that we have our, in, it's already converged, okay? Well, it didn't converge, arrived to the maximum number of iterations. But see that Y plus is not oscillating. Y plus, remember, is a data indication of wall shear stress, okay? It's related to that. CD as well, we need to change the scale, but it should be very... Uh, very steady the behavior. So we can take this for granted as a good solution or a steady solution. And now we can do the traditional post-processing. Also see that turbulent viscosity ratio, what I mentioned, that this quantity is important to look at the mesh. Okay, so just to show you that, and let me draw the mesh. Okay. How about that? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So the colors that doesn't help, but as it mentions that this turbulent viscosity ratio, remember that turbulence peaks somewhere in the buffer layer, okay, it's very energetic. So to look at your mesh resolution close to the wall is good enough. You look at this. So see that in this case, this mesh is very, very fine. So it's stream is more than good, okay. But in one case is you realize that see that is speaking somewhere here. Okay, probably your, the, the, the midpoint of your turbulence that boundary layer will be somewhere here. So as you see that is you have just one or two cells in this region, that means that is that is not a good mesh, okay? So you should refine it. So in this case, this, this is a quite good mesh. And you can take a look at also on the, this field. Okay, let me put here auto range, probably. Okay, probably we can see better here. So see that Somewhere here is peaks the the turn the turn viscosity radio pro, radio probably would be also the midpoint of the boundary layer. But see that it's a very good mesh. Okay, so this mesh that is resolving, even as you go here, see that you're clustering enough cells to resolve you now the velocity gradient normal to the wall. And the other quantity to look is here. You have your your traditional quantities. So the other one to look here for it, it is the this one intermittency. Okay, so this one is the one that is telling you where do, let me now switch off the mesh. Where do you have laminar or turbulent flow? Okay, so see that here, all this region, okay, it is laminar, okay, so see that it's a sizable no, region normal to the wall. Then you sort of, you see this behavior means already the transition here, and see that it now is transitioning to fully turbulent, so see that the laminar region is becoming thinner, thinner, okay. And so on. So this is the idea of these models. Okay, so add, you add those quantities that has been calibrated using some experimental correlations, and then it will find where do you have laminar or turbulent behavior, and according to that, will will set no a given correction in your turbulence model. Okay, so now just to do as well the traditional validation. So recall that if we mentioned that we can do these plots. To region, so we have all the sampling there already enabled. I'm not going to details. We have addressed that a lot. So I can go to plots, and I should have those there already. So let's see that. Okay. So first, I have the skin friction, the flat place. Okay. So see that we have that evolution there. But also remember that you should have there the validation data, so you can open that one. So here we have Reynolds. Okay, in X using the length, flat play length. Also, you have it in function of uh, the actual distance, not in the range. So let's read the data. Okay. And voila, this is it. Okay, so see that we have a very good agreement. And then we are going to have the other plot. So in this one, okay, so see that this is will be line eight, if I will recall, should be the turbulent region. Okay, so in any case, that's plot this data, so watch, 
Okay, so I should let's plot this profile. Okay, the Spalding profile. Okay, so see that comparing with the Spalding profile, see that we have quite good agreement there. Okay, so see that in this case we have it's not say that this Spalding profile is the good one, okay? But see that between these two, we have a large deviation difference in the in the buffer region, okay? That's why we avoid it because that buffer region, precisely, there is not a universal or a good enough uh, fit in there. So all the models will have the largest differences here, and this small deviation can account for for a lot for 10, 20 percent of error that you are going to carry into your turbulent region okay so and now in plot three okay so this okay the flat play okay couldn't coordinate so i would like to see what all the plots okay so line nine this should be the okay the other laminar okay so i will use this one okay and say so see that this is the laminar profile okay so let me load also the laminar so let me load everything here and see that in this sampling location that will be you know, the, the location where the flow still is laminar, see that this is what we have, okay? It's following the laminar law, okay? As expected. So this is it now, our validation. And just to show you here the comparison with different solutions, okay? So here I already have, but here in fluent case, outputs, okay? So we have a different cases. So see that here, I will open this, 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 and this, okay, different models. And let me open also the validation data. And voila. So look at what we have, okay? So we have the transition model, SST, okay? And then also the other model, the SST intermittency, okay? The three equations. And see that these bo both models here are giving a, a relative good results, okay? With some differences, but it's something acceptable. But now if we look at the laminar solution, okay, this will be like pink, I think. So you see that the pink line is following completely this laminar behavior, okay? It's not doing the blending. And something similar will happen with the, uh, here, see that it's happening with the SST, the fully turbulent. So the SST fu fully turbulent, okay, it's not doing the blending to laminar, it's staying in the, in the turbulent region, okay? So it managed to predict relative well the turbulent behavior, but doesn't manage to predict this one. Same happens with the laminar. It managed to predict very well the laminar behavior, but does not predict very well the turbulent behavior, okay? So the only models that manage to predict this transition to turbulence are those models specifically uh, calibrated for that. You might be able to use eddy viscosity models now, but nonlinear eddy viscosity uh, models to solve this. Also using some very specific less models, okay, like well, no, very well calibrated for wall banded flows. But if you go to less, you will need to switch to 3D, so it will be very, very expensive because 3D also on a steady. Okay, so this is this case, okay, very interesting case. I invite you to play with different models, okay, so you have the options. So here I didn't show this model, the K-Omega, here, the gamma, I use, I know, yes, this is the, the intermittency, should be this one. I didn't use this one, okay, you can run that, okay, and then you can compare also with different turbulence models, Palos Almaras, k and you will see that you won't get this, this switching, okay. Then you can also do the traditional post-processing, okay? And this is it, okay? This is transition to, to turbulence. You also have here the mesh, so you can, from this mesh, you can extract the geometry and redo the mesh, something finer or quartz, and you will see the influence. Now, if you use a quartz mesh, you will see again that you are not going to be able to, to capture that transition. And finally, remember that there is an external influence with uh, inlet conditions. So if you change these values, in particular noise turbulence intensity, you will get different behaviors here. So large turbulence intensity are going to onset immediately the turbulent flow. Okay, so you're going to see that this curve will be here like the SST. And if you use a very low value, okay, likely you are not going to onset the transition to turbulence. Okay, talking about using the transitional models. Okay, that's all for your case, for this case. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.